Hi guys, so today we're discussing DNS records and I'm gonna show you the difference between the A record, the C name, the text record, and uh, the MX record. So we're gonna go through these four very important DNS records. Uh, there's more than four, of course, but these four are the most important records that you should know about. And I'm gonna show you uh, a glimpse from inside Cloudflare and show you how to use Cloudflare to manage your DNS and how the security or the extra security layer of Cloudflare works. I'm going to be sharing my screen. Let's get inside. Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, today is a continuation of us discussing the domain name system or DNS. If you remember in one of my last videos, we've discussed how the DNS thing or the domain name system uh, in the internet or on the internet works. We've also discussed Cloudflare and I highly recommended it to everyone. And I've decided to go one step further. Today we're discussing um, the different DNS records. Especially, you know, for DNS records, uh, there are four very famous ones. is the A record, the C name, the MX, and the text record, which is not here. I'm just using like one of my domain names as, a, as an example. There's no website there. There's nothing. There's no email or a website. So I can play around as much as I want right now and uh, show you around here. Uh, so as a double whammy, I've decided to show you how Cloudflare looks from the back end. So I'm logged into Cloudflare. Uh, if I'm adding a new domain to Cloudflare, I can just go click add a site and it will ask me for some details. And But this site is already added. So... Let's go and have a quick look. So the first record, uh, before we get actually into the records, I want to show you my name servers. So these are the name servers. If you remember last time when we were discussing how the DNS system works or how the domain name system works, um, we said that for every domain name, there is an authority, like a specific authority. This authority tells the root DNS servers of all the internet what is the IP address of that specific domain. So the name servers are the authority for a given domain name, which is the NS. Uh, where you put this, like the settings, where you change your name servers is where you've bought or where, where you've registered your domain. It's not necessarily where it's hosted. It's where it was registered. As an example, many people use GoDaddy uh, or Namecheap, for example, to register their domain names. Uh, so this is where you would go log in and change your NS or your name servers. Uh, generally speaking, if you're not using Cloudflare, your name servers would usually be the hosting name servers. So for example, if you're using SiteGround, your name servers would look something like ns1.siteground.com and ns2.siteground.com and, and so on. Uh, here we're using Cloudflare. And as you can tell, uh, they have funny names there. And, and don't be alarmed if your name server would be called Michael or Julia or something like that. That's a <laughs> that's a Cloudflare thing. You're not hacked or anything. They just like strange names or people names, which is good sometimes. Um, anyway, so here I'm using Cloudflare, which means for my domain name, which is quickwebsitetoday.com, the authority name server is Cloudflare. So since this is my authority, this will be where I have to log in to create my DNS records, the different DNS records that I need in order for every service that I have online to work. So let's scroll up and show you. Now, I want you to ignore the A record that's called old hosting. It's just me reminding myself of an older IP address for a reason. But generally speaking, <laughs> any domain name should only have one A record. You should not see more than one. Otherwise, you will have confusion. The A record, A is for address. So this gives every single server on the internet, including the root DNS servers that are responsible to resolve your domain name to its IP address right? It gives them the address. So that's, it's called the address record, the A record. That's the most important one. And that's the first record that you have to create. If you have everything else, but you don't have the A record, sometimes things will not work. So you have to create the A record first. You have to go and copy the IP address from your hosting 
So if you are using cPanel, when you log into your cPanel, go to the top upper right hand side corner and under server details, you'll see the server's IP address. That's the one you want to copy. They usually give you this information, but in case they didn't or you lost that email, you can just log into cPanel and be careful. When you log on to cPanel, you'll see your server's IP address and you may see another IP, which is probably where you have logged in from the last time you were on the cPanel. So just make sure you're actually copying your server's hosting IP address. This is the most important piece of info. You need the correct IP address right here. I'm on Cloudflare, right? So you copy this and you put it here. That's the important one. The next record for you, which is also important, is the canonical name or the C name. Basically, you need a C name record for anything that you append to your domain name. So here, for example, if, if I had a website and I go to quickwebsitetoday.com, since I already have my A record there, you will be able to get to my website, right? But if I don't have the C name record right over here, right? If I don't have that, when you do www.quickwebsitetoday.com, you get nothing. You get an error because the record doesn't exist. So it doesn't resolve. It doesn't know where to go. Same thing if you create a subdomain on your hosting. Most hosting plans, they will allow you uh, unlimited number of subdomains. So I can have new.quickwebsitetoday.com. I can have staging.quickwebsitetoday.com. For each one of those subdomains, I need a C name. How do I create a C name? I just go and say add a record, choose type, scroll down to C name. Apologies, my mic is too close to my keyboard, so you probably hear some noise when I type. Okay, instead of typing the full D name, the full C name here, I can just go at which is add for root, right? Oh, sorry, <laughs> it should be here, not here. The name here is the subdomain name. So let's say I'm creating a staging website and I want to call it staging 10, and then I'll just save it. And that's it. And now I have a C name called uh, staging10.quickwebsitetoday.com. Let me just click on type so they're all sorted by their type. They appear together. It makes it easy. The third one, which is one of the most important DNS records, is the MX record, which is the mail exchanger. If you're hosting your mail where you're hosting your website, chances are your MX record just says mail.domainname.com. Let's up here, I've assumed that I don't have an email on this domain anyway. I've got nothing on this domain, but let's assume I'm using Google G Suite as my email, as my preferred emailing system because it's reliable. It gives me a lot of stuff and so on. So Google would give me three to five MX records to create with different priorities. The number is the priority. I'm not going to go deep into what these priorities mean, but usually you have one MX record or more as long as they're all pointing to the same place. So the, all of them should be pointing to Google. You shouldn't have more than uh, an MX record. Like you shouldn't have two MX records and each one of them is going somewhere else. They all have to be pointing to the same domain. Google would give you, I think five, four, five. I can't remember the exact number. And if you're using Microsoft 365 or Office 365, as it, it used to be called, uh, what's going to happen, they will also give you three MX records to create. And this is easily how you can create any type of record. I'm not going to cover all of them, but I'll go just quickly uh, over some other famous types. Like the SPF record is something that you will probably need to create if you have an email service like Google or Microsoft. They will give you the details that you have to enter in there. So you just create an SPF and then you'll enter the details here. It allows your mail to be sent without it appearing as a spam at the destination. There's one other record. Uh, we call it the DKIM or the domain key. It's a text record. So you just go and create text and then they will give you the information to go for name. And then you'll have like a big string of text 
to write in here in order for your domain key to work and that should be it so these are the most famous ones as you can see here the types of domain or DNS records I don't know how many it is probably more than 10 I've never some of them I've never even touched I've never used and I don't think you know uh, I need to use them like S M I M E A no. but right here right now we're just focusing on the three or four most famous DNS records that you will meet when you're creating your website now I'm showing you where to go and how to do it on Cloudflare because on my previous video I highly recommended you use Cloudflare and if you remember one of the things that I said is that Cloudflare adds an extra layer of security now look this is where my uh, hang on let me just move the microphone a little bit this is the hosting IP address where, where my site actually lives so let's assume somebody has a malicious intent and they want to attack this website now if you see here Cloudflare has proxied this IP address for me this means if you go and conduct a whois search on this domain name it will give you a different domain address sorry domain address <laughs> IP address so let's go who is source sc here it is so now do you see this IP address 104 blah 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 that's actually the Cloudflare IP address cloudflare.net right so if somebody wants to attack my domain name uh, or my website where it lives and they do a who is search it will give them Cloudflare's IP address not my real IP address which is 192 something look here is 104 something so they'll end up attacking Cloudflare's IP which is great not great for Cloudflare but they're built for that like actually they deal with it correctly so that it doesn't bring my hosting server to its knees that's the, the added layer of security now I hope those people with malicious intent will not be watching this specific video otherwise they get the correct IP but anyway tough for me then right um, so this is the reason why one of the reasons why I said the usage of Cloudflare is highly recommended this is the free uh, tier by the way and then if you go here and you go to speed and then caching these are two things extra things that Cloudflare would give you as I said in my past videos uh, if you're using Cloudflare free you wouldn't see like loads of improvement in the speed it would speed it up just a little bit uh, but it's worth having anyway right now let me go back to the DNS setup over here so what if you are hosted somewhere else and your name servers are using the hosting company let's say for example like SiteGround well, I think SiteGround should pay me money now I'm, I'm advertising them for free huh um, <laughs> so if your name servers are ns something dot sideground tech dot com or something like that and you want to go and create extra um, DNS records on the sideground panel on the left hand side and then you scroll down all the way and you find the link that says domain if you are using another hosting company that uses cPanel you need to be looking for something called a zone editor so log into your cPanel look for zone editor click and it will show you all your records and then you can manage them from there uh, usually if you create a subdomain on your hosting company automatically they add the CNAME record for you sometimes they add an A record it depends on what you're trying to do there and but they do this automatically in most cases there's no need for you to add anything manually um, I do this on Cloudflare of course because when I create a subdomain on my hosting it doesn't automatically reflect here I have to go here and uh, get this done so this wraps up oh yeah sorry one thing that I forgot to tell you the MX record with the emails one of the most frequent uh, questions that you get I have just changed my email from the email that was hosted 
with my website on the hosting provider, which wasn't good and it was ending in spam and whatever. And now I moved to Microsoft or to Google or something like that. But five minutes after I've done this and I've created my MX record, I'm not receiving any emails. I can send and it sends okay, but I'm trying to test the email and I'm not receiving anything. So what happened? Okay, what happened was you just created the MX record and it hasn't been propagated properly to all the DNS servers. That takes up to 48 hours. But one of the great reasons to use Cloudflare, this tool, the DNS management tool from Cloudflare is actually very fast. It updates the root DNS servers really quickly. Realistically, and you know, uh, if you want the truth, yes, it takes some time. It could take a few hours, could take a day, could take two days, up to 48 hours. You know, that's the answer that you'll get from the hosting support. <laughs> but let's check it for ourselves. So let me create a new MX record uh, here. I'll just go and go MX, and then the name would be ESPX. And apologies for hitting my keyboard where the mic is. 22.com. Okay. Oh, sorry. I think uh, <laughs> I, did a, I did a mistake. It should be here. And then here I say root. And let's say priority one. And save it. So now I have two MX records. One after the other. Yep. This is just a random thing. It's not true, but I just wanted to show you what does a DNS propagation mean. So let me copy my domain name here. Go to the DNS checker. So it's dnschecker.org. And I'm asking it to tell me what are the MX records of that domain. And look, bang, the new one just started to appear here. 22, blah, 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 22 is there. It, it has already propagated to uh, most of the servers in the world, most of the root DNS servers that fast. So that wraps up this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful and see you on the next one. Bye. Hang on, don't go away yet. Now that you've completed this video, I'm going to have to ask you to click on the like if you have enjoyed it. Because everybody likes to be liked, you know? You can also subscribe. That way, you're going to get all of the cool YouTube stuff made by this guy right here. And finally, why not let all your friends know how great you thought this video was? You can share it with them or even use it in your blog. Thank you. Thank you very much. We see you soon.